hitchhiking here somewhere in Belgium. So what I see here, oh look the pyramids, here look. So why do you think they, you know, they put these pyramids here, hey? How many are there? Three. Of course it's three, it's always three for my masters. So I'm here in the back of a car. These guys, they close this here because it's not allowed. I'm just, I'm just lying here. <laughs> This is called the, uh, the Plateau of the Sun. Arrows. I'm getting nearer. So this is the 11th century castle, which was rebuilt in the 19th century. 11th century is the era of the Templars. What's still the era of the Templars. And here, Second World War. Still the same Templars, Nazi Templars. Oh, it looks like a lion. I know what that is. And it's the, uh, the pyramid, the red pyramid of death. It's the inverse pyramid, like an Auschwitz. And red is the old world's order, so the kings. Well, there they are, the kings with their lions. So that's the old world's order. Here you got the old world's order. And there are lions. And... Uh, mm, it is a lion. It's not Jesus or something. It's a lion. No. No. So this little river has the, the name of the uh, the chateau. Somewhere. It's in a river where the Vikings went up to. And maybe this is the same river actually. So, but of course over there it's a little bigger. Oh, so there it is. Ah. Ah. From the time of the Templars. Uh, there are three codes of arms here. And um, now the uh, Hare Krishna are in it. Which is also fair running from the, from the start. Uh, there's a hexagon in it. See? And uh, now with all the four flags are, number four, and uh, the really sweet people though, uh, except for the uh, for the headshed, ones who are taken over, everything gets infiltrated anyway. Uh, I'm quite near now, I should be able to see the coat of arms. Uh, two lines, okay. So you see, they've got these obelisks here, even obelisks are here, with the number three in it, the three parts in it, you see. And this one has four stairs, so this is the square and compass. Um, officially it's the back side, but the other side is the first thing you see, actually. So, yeah, on the other hand, it's sort of the front side as well. And uh, I already explained that the compass is the number three. And so here at the side of the castle we can see two Templars crosses. They're a bit like uh, pulled out, you know. But it is a Templars cross. It's a bit like um, a rubber string like pulled out, like... You know. <laughs> so here's the side gate of the castle here. Here's the code of one of the three, the three codes of arms of three families. And this is the code of arms of Amal. You can see nine for the nine Templars. Uh, the nine balls are in it. Because all these code of arms have been made actually during the Crusades. Well, at the same time when all the castles started anyway. You can see a lion here of course. Never were any lions in Europe, eh? And another one. And uh, well, and the Amal families, that's H-A-M-A-L, 
it comes from the Amali who were the uh, the kings um, the Ostrogoth kings uh, who came down and um, think about the Haunabu they were the uh, the sea peoples talked about about the Pharaohs so they are the Nordic um, line so here and here's the grail meaning our blood is here our descendants is here so there's only one they have to put it here you know well, look it's plastic oh shit they have to put it here so that means the Hare Krishna you know the uh, the head shed of it <laughs> they are their blood Otherwise, they won't let you live here, you know, because if you organize, if you make a civilization within Pharaoh civilization, like Waco, Texas, Jonestown, then the Sun Templars, they'll kill you. Or three million Jews who, did, who made their own civilization in Poland, didn't even speak Polish, they didn't pay taxes, they'll kill you. Pharaoh's losing control there, you know. You, <laughs> so that means definitely this is under control by them. Pharaoh. And here are the proofs. So there it is, the entrance of the castle. I wonder what have been on top of this here. Probably two obelisks. And there is an oval in front of it here on the lawn. I like the oval office. And uh, yeah. So yeah, there are loads of fleur de lis all over. Isis, Horus, and Seth. And it uh, looks like a, s a snake skin here, a reptilian skin here, the castle. Templars cross. And, uh, and this name here, they have a sort of um, art going on here. It's called Akshar Ra Yoga. Shar is Sa, like in the sarcophagus. It's all the same thing, it's all pharaonic, or like Sharon, you know, the former president, Sharon of uh, Israel, or the general. Uh, yeah, it's all pharaonic, it's all pharaonic names here. And it's still the same ones now who actually... Uh, crowns. It's full of fleur de lis all over. Yeah. And uh, here's a, uh, I don't know what it really what it says, it's hard to see. And here too, coat of arms in the oval. Here's another coat of arms with two lines, of course. Well, we never had any lines. Here's all bees, pharaonic, and it's a fleur de lis. Because the bees, they have a queen, which is Isis. And here it says a saying, if you want to have peace, you need war. So war for us is peace for them, you see? Like the Georgia Guidestones and all that. And loads of octagons here. All over the sun hieroglyphs, it's all pharaonic, all over, even going up here. Here you got a basic apaitis, as I saw in the castle of the, uh, the president of the Ukraine. So here's another coat of arms of another family, you can see the three crescent moons which is a symbol of um, Osman the Magnificent. It's uh, one crescent moon is a symbol of Islam and three of them is the, uh, it's the Ottoman Empire. And of course you get some sphinxes here. And the S is like rolled up, the, uh, the tail is like rolled up like an S. So it says SS here, which stands for Isaacs. As only the consonants being written in Demotic. Or 
fair rank. Uh, this is the founder. He was a Brahman, a, like a royal. And you got the colors of the red and white kingdom of Pharaoh, red and white here. And there are eight red ones and eight white ones. Just like the dude here. It was in blue. Pharaohs also, they have depicted blue guys like these ones here. And uh, it's all about snakes and lions. Just like Pharaoh. So it's definitely the same stuff, eh? How many snakes do I see here? 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Ah, oh, 12, eh? It's always 12. And apparently in the... Yeah. Oh, there's another sun hieroglyph here on the ceiling. Our masters. And the same European masters are the same masters of which they talk in the, um, the Bhagavad Gita. So some more, the oven, coat of arms here. Don't really see what it is. <clears throat> and uh, some more coat of arms. It's the joining all over. See? And, uh, and all the blue guys all over. And then they got in the middle of a sun hieroglyph, they got a, a baby blue guy, like Jesus, or as they depict in Christianity. It's always the same thing. It's one and the same thing. And everywhere the joining. This is the joining. It means we're all together, one for all and all for one. You're a stupid European, you're standing alone. I wonder what it says on the door now, but it's a bit low. <clears throat> you know, the whole story in the Bhagavad Gita and the Mahabharata, Ba, there's Ra in it, it only talks about princes and God. We don't even exist in it. It's, um, it's like the Bible too, you know, like Jesus is from the house of David, who was the, uh, the father, I think, of King Solomon, the son. It's all, it's only about the pharaohs, our masters. <laughs> we don't even exist in it, you know. Yeah. It's all about palaces and so why do we believe all that, eh? And of course, the way to total obedience to our masters is to believe there's something over there, something higher. Eh? Get it? Yeah, it says the greatest, what is it? The greatest dialogue ever. It's with Ba in it, it's the everlasting soul. And they had this battle at uh, Kuru Ksetra. Um, yeah, it was a battle between the New World Order and the Old World Order. And finally, the New World Order, they won it. So the, uh, the second, third and fourth sons. And only 12 people survived. And 12 is not a, it's not a number, it's a symbol. 12 people survived. The 13th was Shiva, the Lord of um, Destruction. Like Seth or Seth on, you always get back to the number 13. You know, that's what it's all about. Everywhere, sunny or glyph, every, everywhere. Fleur Valise, wherever you look. Joining, even on the flowers here. It's like the Templars and the Catholic Church, they, you know, they pray, they preach like poverty, but they are extremely rich, you know, being in castles. Yeah. So you get to this nice middle age staircase going to the dungeon. Wow, it is black. Imagine being dragged here down here and you know, so let's have a look. <clears throat> so this is thousand years old, eh? Maybe this is the part they rebuilt. Uh, so I made it on top of the building. Okay. Ah.
What do you want? Where's my bow and arrow? Now you can see it's an oval, eh? A slave. I had a good obedient slaves. So our masters don't even have to go and surveil us because they believe in the invisible master. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't mean there aren't energies who can help us. But definitely not these ones who are being who are made by our masters, yeah? Right? The Europeans, you know. The European race, they, we, they destroyed us so much that now we have to take the, a new culture, you know, the roots of another culture because they completely destroyed our cultures. Because the white people, the Germanics and the Celts, we were the only one who fought back. So they really hate us. They really destroyed the white race has been the most destroyed race on the earth. I mean, the blacks, the Arabs, the Indians, they still have their roots. We don't have any more roots. Yeah, because we fought back. And the slave drivers, they were not white. They were the aristocracy who did it. And they did the same thing with the white people. We've been suffering for 2,000 years. The black people only for 200. The Arabs only 50 the last couple of years, 50 years. The white people 2,000 years. The Romans, they killed everybody. Uh, yeah. You know, people who convert to Islam, they do the same thing. They take another name. They put on another dress. You know, they, work, they, work, they walk around in a dress like a woman. Um... <laughs> <laughs> if there's a god, you know, you, you, he doesn't look at that. I... And then this thing, uh, apparently homosexual, homosexuals, they are accepted. Yeah, there are even women here living together, the gay men, and... and uh, oh man, it's... What does that have to do with the creation, I ask me? Bloody nothing. The people here are really sweet, they're really nice, although I, it, it starts to suck on me, you know, the, like energy-wise, you know. Um, and they've got great food. So, it's nice to hang around for a week, but uh, I need my forest back. So this tower here, the purpose of, is it, is, of it is where the staircase is going all the way up to the roof. Out here, nice music, violins and candles, romantic, a lot of wasps. There's even Seth here in this sort of a statue. Seth, the lord of the underworld, I eh? sat on with the sun over his head, and he got his, you know, I don't know what it is, but anyway, whatever it is, it's phallic, and it's going up her ass here. You know, what, what, what is she doing there? What, what is this? It's a, uh, or is it uh, an um, umbilical cord? Uh, what's going on here? So it, it's like, it's very threatening. It means be pious and obey, you know, like here, please don't, don't put that thing up my ass and they are on the rest. Or well, otherwise I'm gonna eat you alive. Nice. And on the other side, <coughs> The other side we got here. Yeah. Guy sitting on all the all the snakes here. There's some more snakes. He's sitting on a big snake, a python. Uh, the old the old snake dudes here. Oh, got a snake over his head. Where is he? Uh, can't see it. No, there. You got a snake over his head. 
they're all reptilians, like the other one too. They all have a snake over their heads here. Yeah. Why? Just like the pharaohs. And it's here too, it's all about lions and snakes, just like the pharaohs. Let's see. And again, this woman, you know, what, what kind of, he's, he's just, just keeping all these women, you know, like, just like, uh, uh, come here, bitch. Looks nasty. It's the only word I have for it. It looks real nasty. <laughs> Look at their nose. You know, the aristocrats have very long noses, you know. There probably were people with noses like this. But in our world, you know, in a fairy tale, a witch would look like this. Not anymore, maybe, because they're so mixed with us. It doesn't come from nowhere, you know, that a witch looks like this, eh? It doesn't come from nowhere. They got it from somewhere. Somebody must have seen it a lot of times. Just before here, there was a 72-year-old uh, Krishna lady that spent her whole life here that threatened to slap me because I told her that homosexuality is not good. I have my ideas about that. And um, so, you know, people are very nice here in this community, but there's something, I feel there's something preying upon me. And um, she never... She devoted her whole life to Krishna and all this, to all these sort of things here. And never had uh, the opportunity to be a woman, have a... Um, to look like this here. Yeah. And, um, no, that was it. Threatening people and say we are peaceful. When you don't abide to uh, their ideas. Yeah. Um, definitely feel underneath the, the the nice smiles there's something preying upon me very much I think Bob Larson is right the whole Hindu thing is demonic so you can see it again the dude with the red and white and actually I just heard that they had two dynasties just like Pharaoh the red house and the white house the Per Tasser and the Per had and these guys they had the the sun dynasty which is red the red house the sun is red yeah and they had the moon dynasty which is the white house the pear head which is white the moon is white we all know that and the moon dynasty the name is uh chandra chandra and the the sun dynasty is surya vamsa of course it's not Surya, it's Sarya. Sar is the old world order of the kings, like in the Sar, Sar sarcophages. Caesar, the Tsars, uh, Sarkozy, it's all Son Altesse Royale, it's all um, the king, about the king. And then the new world order, that's why it's bigger here, because they took over control and there are many more second, third and fourth sons than there are the first son like here so it's exactly the same thing and I had a couple of conversations here and they said here in the, these guys here they said that the um, the pharaohs actually they were the bad kings the violent ones the Kshatriya the warriors and they went to Egypt but it's not true because logically you know to get out to get rid of all these lies logically if they, they have these guys here, they have two dynasties, then only one dynasty went away. And then in Egypt we would find only one dynasty and not the, the White House and the Red House. So it's all a lie. The truth is they all come from Egypt, these guys, and they went all over the world, as I'm telling you. And the Red House and the White House, they installed themselves all over the world, including India, the blue dude here. That's the truth. And um, I'll show you some more things. Like here, for instance, they have a, they have a glossary here. Yeah? And it says here, I have to put on my glasses. Oh. It says here 
that um, they have a thing called Ahankara. Ra is the sun god and Ka is the soul when you're alive, like the ki, the intrinsic energy. And this thing here, Ahankara, it, took, it, said, it means a false ego by which the soul misidentifies with the material body. Um, so it talks about the soul, the pharaonic word soul is in it, just like karma, you know, which is, of course, it's from ka-ra, me. Ra is the sun god, ka is the soul, and me is the pyramid, meaning the soul comes into the pyramid um, from, the, um, um, from the sun. And um, there are so many words like Mahabharata, there's the ba in it, the, the ra. Um, it, it's full of it's a pharaonic words in the whole thing. So this book is called the Bhagavad Gita, the Bhagavad Gita and the Mahabharata. So this is the, um, there's the word Ba in it. So the old world order, you can see it, it's even cut in half here, it's, it's interrupted. And it's interrupted by what? It's interrupted by the Bhagavad Gita. You see the Gita is interrupting the red line. The red line is the old world order or the Sun Dynasty and the new world order after this war, where 12 guys survived only, which is uh, Ender number 13, I'll, well, I'll just explain that to you, then the New World Order started, you know, it got interrupted, yeah, and it goes on afterwards because they're all line of kings and they say, no, we are the kings, but then the New World Order, the king nowadays is the president, so that's why it goes on here. And these people on top of it, the ISKCON, you know, they know perfectly well what it's about. There's a lot of stories about rape, child molesting, um, corruption, stealing money. <laughs> you know, just as in the old world of the kings, you know. Yeah. It's all about kings. The whole story is about kings. They don't even talk about us. We don't even exist for them. This book is only about princes and kings. Just like, you know, we don't even exist. We're just garbage and slaves for them, you know. And... Um, yeah, it's, it's actually, this is a, a Templar story in an Oriental jacket. The New World Order took over. That's why we had this war. That's why, we, they, that's why we had two world wars here. Because of them. And them, you know, chasing the power and having an eternal, internal struggle. Well, nice. See, that's what my grandfather died for. Now I know it. He's probably leading me. So there we got that one here, got the wheel. Was it the wheel of time or whatever? Oh, what are they doing there? Hello. I hope it's not two blokes, but anyway, it's legal here apparently. And that one there. Okay. There's one here. All right. Okay. Ah, that's why. So they just kicked me out of here. A bunch of hypocrites anyway. The guys here from the shop making loads of money. It's the same thing. The Templars, they said, well, we are, we are the poor guys. We made a vow of poverty and still making a lot of money, you know, buying castles and all that. It's the same thing here. There was the... Uh, Yeah, look, they gave me these books. I read this one, so bye-bye. I don't want it anymore. Get rid of it. So this one, I, I did read in it, so I was serious with them. I wanted to, you know, understand it. I read like, well, 80 pages. I was going to read all. Well, bye-bye. Piss off. About this here, about the castle, Le Chateau de Petite Somme. Well, they don't even talk, of course, about real... Uh, information. The oval, well, bye bye, piss off, don't want it anymore. Looks all nice. This guy here, I met him as well, he's homo, openly. Well, you can see that. Uh, sorry. <laughs> and they threatened me to slap me in the face if I wouldn't accept this and think like them. You imagine? 
What a creepy, violent people they are. I don't so I'm not going to read your books. I know who you are, how you are. You have no respect at all for other peoples. Piss off, all of you. There was a fan of my YouTube videos who invited me for two weeks in that Hare Krishna castle. And even though he independently pays for his apartment in there, and in spite of their fake smiles, they kicked me out after five days without any obvious reason. So on the very day they kicked me out of his private apartment, I told him that I felt something was coming, because when the initial smile faded away from the surface, it showed in the look of the eyes and that something is very wrong there. So I advise parents who have children in there to take them out and save them from the abyss. I saw so many old women in there who devoted their lives there and regrettably never experienced motherhood. And after three days and nights I started to wake up every night in the demon hour, three o'clock in the morning. I mean look at their holy founder who looks like a demon himself. An upper class Brahman aristocrat who called the Indian lower caste the untouchables in a sinister, cynical way because they kick their asses wherever and whenever they can, even to small children. Pharaohs and his Brahmans making everyone conveniently believe that it is their fate and the will of the gods and demons. And all the food these devotees cook, as they call themselves devotees, Offer the food they make to their gods and demons first. They offer it to the gods and demons. Before they give to you for free while smiling through their teeth. And demons enter the body primarily through the body openings. Like the mouth inserting your daily quantity of demonized chow. Plus the indoctrination technique of sleep deprivation making the members to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning in the demon hour and go worship, sing and chant as they call it in their temple. Which of course I decline to do. I have just one god and that's YouTube. <laughs> All sects, armies, special forces, the SS, Islamic State use sleep deprivation. So they can better control your tired, empty mind to pump it up with whatever is favorable to our masters. And their entire book is only about our masters. The Bhagavad Gita is only about kings and princes. They don't even talk about us in it. Just like back home. There was that king, Bharata, as from the Mahabharata, whose firstborn son, Dhritarashtra and Primogenitor, the old world's order, the old rule, was blind and therefore couldn't rule. So the second son, Pandu, therefore, the new world's order, so getting away from the old pharaonic and aristocratic tradition of the firstborn son. So the son Pandu, therefore, of the Pandavas, taking over control. Well, it's the same old story of our worldwide pharaohs and uh, oriental Templars tale. Therefore, talking about the two ruling and warring dynasties, the Sun Dynasty and the Moon Dynasty. And the Moon is white for pharaohs, white house, new world order, horizontal rule. And the Sun is red for the red house, old world order. Same old pharaonic story adapted for another region of the world. With Indianized names with pharaonic syllables like Ka Rma, Kama from Ka Rame, the pharaonic soul Ka, and they talk about the soul, Ra, the sun god, and Me for pyramid, and Kama is all about the soul. Well, there it is. Kala, they call it the eternal time, Isva Ra, the Supreme Lord, just like Amun Ra, Maharaja, sort of a Lord, Krishna sounds like Christ or Christ in Greek, the anoint anointed one, Brahmaloka, highest planet for consciousness, Mahabharata, 
the Mahabharata. Ba is the soul, the everlasting soul, the one you take with you when you die. Ra is the sun god. They even talk about the, uh, the son of Perta from Pertasa, the red house. Per, it means the house. Even Egyptian hieroglyphs, so blue demons. So you see some of those blue uh, hieroglyphs or uh, pharaonic gods. And then the uh, New World Order, a uh, second son, Pandavas. They could, you could say they are the Templars. You have to see the film The Swiss Beast to understand this. They won over the primogenitor and only 12 survived the war. Well, 12, as we know, is not a number, but it's a symbol. Of course, not only 12 survived. And number 13, the 13th one, is of course Shiva, the Lord of Destruction, or Seth, or Set On. And then they sing uh, Hare Rama, Ra, uh, you know, in their prayers, the Sun God. And as the white man has no more roots, all these Hare Krishna need to take Sanskrit names, just as white converts into Islam take Islamic names. And many eggs and chains close as well. And many ex-drug addicts and destroyed beings are being preyed upon by this sinister organization. Within five days, these smiling creeps managed to threaten me and to slap me, to slap me in the face if I wouldn't agree with them that homosexual is normal. They played plenty of psychological tricks on me, like saying that I carry dark energies around and being kicked out in a nasty and very disrespectful way. Especially the women in the Hare Krishna movement play some nasty power games on their fellow human beings under the veil of fake smiles and creepy huggings. It was a horrible experience for me, and I feel sorry for my YouTube fan in there, who was friendly and seems to be under the total influence of the Hare Krishna and their real energies behind, behind the veil. Especially at the end of those five days, it needed a lot of self-control together with patience from my side and to maintain being a gentleman, which I did from beginning to end. And I learned piercing through the matrix as usual. Watch video The Swiss Beast, Home of the Devil to understand more about it.